television TV. I would never hurt Blade. I love Puppet Master. He's my favorite. Anyways, that's not what this show is about. It's not about dolls that come to life. It is about machines that come to life. One of my favorite films, Maximum Overdrive, came out in 1986 by Stephen King. And guess what? My earthly dad was actually the caterer on set for a lot of the actors and Stephen King himself. Today we're going to check out some of the footage. We're also going to be talking to the caterer himself, Tim Shockey. He is the owner of the original Green Goblin head. Let's say, let's get to that interview. Bye. Wait, I told you not to be doing that while I'm on film. Lucy Fire here. I'm here with Tim Shockey, the owner of the Green Goblin Head, the original from Maximum Overdrive movie made in 1986. Tim, can you tell us a little bit about how you acquired this and the process of restoring it? Yeah, sure. I uh, I had a video store back in 1986 and uh, here in Ohio and my family, they all live down around Wilmington, North Carolina. And my brother called me up one day and says, hey, some guy cut this head off the truck for maximum overdrive, and uh, it's for sale. So I called the guy up right then, made a deal, and drove all night. Come back the next day with it. But when I got it, this was the only one that was used throughout the whole movie. At the end of the movie, they blew it up, and it was gone from here down. The top of the ears were gone. It was all burnt. And uh, so I thought, well, someday I want to restore this. So... We had it in our video store, and that, the way it looked, and uh, let our customers see it and so on. And then we sold the business, and it laid out in my backyard for years. The dogs used it for a dog house. The kids played on it. Uh, and finally, when my son turned 18, it's like, it's time. So I brought it inside, and I uh, spent two years, evenings and weekends, out here in the garage, uh, restored it. Andy, you son of a bitch. I thought she was down in Texas. <laughs> no, that was last week. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's some rig, all right. Look, give her a big drink. I gotta have some coffee. Mm, right. There was some speculation about this getting ran over. Can you, what's the story <laughs> on that? <laughs> yes. Uh, this was laying down in the backyard before I restored it. And uh, my wife hated this thing. <laughs> she was out cutting grass one day, and she didn't do it on purpose, but you know, she hit that ear over there with the riding mower and knocked it off. Oh no! Yeah, and so <laughs> that's like okay. That's when I moved it inside. Before that, I almost lost it. I was in Virginia working a job, and I came home early, and some guy was backed up to my fence. And I'm like, uh, can I help you? And he goes, oh, I'm just loading that head up. And I said, who told you you could have that? And he goes, that lady over there. Oh. That was my wife. <laughs> and I said, sir, <laughs> you cannot have this. This is not hers to give. And I looked at her and I said, if I ever come home and it's gone, whether you gave it away or no. someone stole it, you better be gone too. Be held okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you tell me, has anyone from the movie signed it or seen it? Yes. Um, Esposito, the video game player, mm -hmm. I met him in Canada uh, actually in 2013 and he signed it behind this ear and then uh, Joey uh, Miller that played, I'm sorry, Patrick Miller that played Joey, he signed it. I met him in Tennessee a couple years ago. That's awesome. And uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It is really cool. Do you have like a favorite part of the movie that Oh, wow. I, I'm going to say when it got blown up. That's and I know that part. sounds. Well, here's, here's the reason. Had they not destroyed this, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. True, true. I would have never got it. So, I, 
it's it's something that's horrible that happened yeah. but had it not happened i wouldn't have had it so yeah that's my favorite part do you know about how much it cost you to fix this up wow i have oh my gosh 40 at least 40 hours a week in this thing for two years i mean i faithfully every weekend every evening when i shut down the business i would go next door and work till late and material wise i don't know i if i was paid for doing this i'd <laughs> 20 40 80, 000, i don't know how much i've got time wise you know if, if i was paid for going right you know it, i've got a lot of time in it mm -hmm. material wise not a lot but as far as uh, events or if somebody wanted to see the head how do they contact you so you, they can you can bring this Oh, um, they can reach me at uh, bookus at thegoblinproject.com mm -hmm. or um, any social media pages or anything? Yes, uh, Green Goblin Head on Facebook, uh, Twitter. It's Green Goblin Head on all the social media. Same, same thing. They can reach me through any of that. And also, if it's an individual wanting to see this, they can come here to see it if they want in between whatever events I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a couple come in from England in 2018, I think it was. Wow. They flew in from England to Chicago, rented a car, and drove down to see this thing. Oh, wow. And uh, so they yeah. really like the movie. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. if you want to see Tim Shockey, look him up on social media or his websites. We will also post them below the screen. You can find it there. We're also going to be doing an interview with Robertino Yansani. He catered for some of the celebrities on the movie. Zool is going to be doing that next. Shockey's Goblin Project, uh, your source for Hollywood collectibles, and we are here today with Robertino Yansani. And Robertino, um, when's the last time you saw this head? Last time I saw his head was 35 years ago. So we're going to talk to you about this is a very inspirational and hardworking man here who worked on the set of Massimo Overdrive. That's right. And um, he's also Lucy Fire's earthly father, believe it or not. But he, pro he told me it does not make him the devil. That's right, right? Mm -hmm. You are not the devil, just to be clear. All right. So, you have a beautiful accent. Where are you from? I'm from Puerto Rico. I was born in Ponce, Puerto Rico. Okay, and when did you come here? I came here in um, 1981. I joined the Navy. And what did you do in the Navy? In the Navy, I was a bosun there. Okay. Uh, that's a... Uh, uh, most people don't. You have to be a military to recognize right. that. Well, we got we got our, some of our fans out there. I'm sure we'll know what that yeah, is. Yeah, that's that. Uh, they work on the box of meaning uh, uh, see and anchor detail. Okay. And because I didn't speak much English. Okay. That's what they put me. All right. Well, thank you for your service. I'm going to make sure that we extend that, that gratitude to you for serving our country. Mm -hmm. And uh, what brought you stateside then after your service? Well, after I finished, I. Um, well, it's a long story. Begin when I was like 16 in Puerto Rico. Okay. I uh, I work in a movie st um, in, a, in a movie theater. I was uh, at, at the door, getting tickets, and uh, one day, you know, it was a Saturday night, and it was the last show of the day it was King Kong, Dino De Laurentiis, King Kong, 1977. So I was at the door, and uh, they told me to close the door because uh, the theater was full, to not to let anyone else come in. But when I was closing the door, a young mother approached with a young daughter, about five years old, and asked me, why are you closing? I said, I can't let you in because we're full. So she said, please let me in because I came in from two towns away. And I said, well, we come back tomorrow. Tomorrow we have two, two shows, one at two o'clock and one at eight. And she said, I can't come back. I came from a couple of towns away, far away. And your little girl started crying, you know. And 
Așa, ce să-i tu nu-i lămi si rău, nu te floa. Bă, bică să-i zi rău povesti, nu să-i, ce să-i rău de floa. E povesti, nu știu. Bă, ai ca ai brot ma hau în asta, ai tu ne rău rău, ai walk in the way crime. Ana, ai zi, ai zi, papi ma, ai bucă sunt tăi naghi la ce, nu? I said, wait here, I'll be back. I closed the door and I went up there to the projection room and I talked to grumpy old rat, look, old man, very grumpy. <laughs> I never talked to him, but that thing, this time I make an obsession. I don't know, an uh, obsession. Exception. And I went to him and I asked him, hey, Rafa, I know you got two seats over there that over, overlook the screen and I know you don't sit there. Can I borrow the, can I use them? And he said, yeah, you can. Because there's a, 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 a young mother and the daughter downstairs. And can, can they come here? And um, he said, yeah, well, I, I went. When I opened the door, they were still there. I said, I, I had good news. You know, I got two seats for you. And uh, later you can see the little girl's eyes, you know. When I want to go see King Kong, you know, I wasn't my favorite cup of tea, you know, King Kong. But she was pretty happy. So I uh, um, let them in and I escorted them to the projection room. Um, I stayed there with them, you know. And then uh, I, when I saw the movie beginning, I saw the name Dino De Lorraine right across the crane, you know. And that name kind of, I like that name, Dino De Laurentiis. Because every movie that we presented at the theater was Dino De Laurentiis. So I thought Hollywood belongs to Dino De Laurentiis. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I said, one day I'm going to meet that guy. One day I'm going to meet that guy in person. So you set this goal early in life. So, you know, I joined the Navy. When I joined the Navy, being in the Navy, I wrote a letter to Dino De Laurentiis. And then he didn't answer me, but his right hand answered me the letter. His secretary answered me the letter. It was negative. Well, you know, uh, we cannot say, because uh, I write scripts, you know. Yeah. And we can ask that to the uh, again, the theater, the, uh, again, our policies and stuff. But we keep in touch. And then when I got out of the Navy, I asked her, can I get a job there? Because I was just opening a, a movie studio in Wimbledon, North Carolina. Yeah. And she said, well, you know, come. You know, I, I accommodate you somewhere in the studio. So I went there. The only opening they had was in the commissary, the kitchen. OK. So. I know how to cook an egg, you know. <laughs> I know how to cook an egg. I have a couple of hamburgers, you know. But, you know, I got the be with the best chef, Giuliano Gallo, Dino De Laurenti's uh, of course. chef. Top you know? notch. So he taught me how to do all these fancy dinners, you know. So I so began. You learned on the job. I began that way, and, you know, I think he taught me, and I began to meet all these movie stars, all their, you know, uh, trades and stuff. So. Just sheer charisma and the audacity. That's what got you here. You would just you just walked in and went, I want to work in a movie studio. I ha I don't have the only position available is in the commissary. I don't have the skills, I can cook an egg. But I want this so bad. And you sold yourself to this this big dream. And it's it's really inspirational when you think about it. It all started in a in a movie theater when you were 16 years old, you saw the magic in this little girl's eyes and, and her desire to see this movie, and and it was contagious, and you just... I know it was. It, it's it was. amazing. Because really I did. I, I achieved my goal. I did not achieve my goal fully, of becoming a writer, or becoming an actor. But your time's not over. But And you have written something, I've haven't you? Do you call. This is your opportunity to plug your book. Yeah, in, 2000, in 2013, I almost died. Remember, I almost died. Did you write a book? What's your book about? Well, I, I've written many stories, many stories. The, my last one was this one, Bandanas. It's called Bandanas. Okay. It's a screenplay. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure Dino was alive today. He probably made this. Yeah? But he's gone, and so is his wife, Martha. And uh, it's going to be hard for me to try to sell these to a movie director. But maybe the folks out there in our audience uh, take bandanas. 
And tell them your name again. Uh, Robertino Yansani. So, and can they get that on Amazon? They can get it on Amazon or they can uh, type my name on Google and um, find it. Amazing. You'll find it there. Amazing. Okay, so I have a lot of other questions for you. Um, because you did work with a lot of, of Hollywood stars in your time when you were working for uh, Dino De Laurenti, um, you worked with a lot of, he did a lot of Stephen King movies, right? Yes. Which ones did you work on? Um, when I went in there, the first one, uh, it was already on production, it was, already, it was Super Bullet. Okay. After that one, uh, Cat's Eye. Okay. And then the last one I worked with was uh, Maximum Overdrive. Okay. And so you met a lot of celebrities on the set there, and you've served a lot of celebrities, yes. including, I hear, Mr. Stephen King himself. Yes. In his trailer. And I, I had a question for you. Did, did, did he have any peculiar food interests or favorite foods that his fans might want you know, to know about? You know, if I brought him a hot dog with fries, a hamburger, with their work, with their looks, give it to him, give it to him, you want to take it. Just an all-American man, just yep. the pure American diet, mm -hmm. all right. And so, among the celebrities that you've worked with on these sets, um, who had the strangest uh, food request? Probably Sissy Spacek. Sissy Spacek? Yeah. What was, was the food? It was um, cottage cheese with uh, peaches. Cottage cheese and peaches, and you think that's strange? <laughs> yeah. Well, you Why know, was it well, strange? Tell me. Oh, uh, I don't know. That was a well. I remember on Thanksgiving Day, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger asked me for uh, cranberry sauce. Well, yeah, that's. that's uh, and I said we don't have that. Thanksgiving Day staple. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> In Ohio, we have some kind of different stuff on the table for Thanksgiving Day that we have in North Carolina. Oh, okay. So I tried to. Uh, serve some peco legs in, in uh, North Carolina, and everybody was Arnold. Why is those Arnold's a red? <laughs> no, hey, that's Ohio way. So, speaking of Sissy Spacek, I hear you had a little celebrity crush on her. Oh, I did. <laughs> I, I took a picture together with her, and, and my wife, I married, she tore her out. Oh, uh, because I'm, not, I'm too bad to go out with Sissy Spacek. But, do you. Do you did you have a backup for that? Oh, um, no, Gina. It's I mean, me, me my the picture. Presentation. Oh, yeah, I got a backup yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good thing, you know, that uh, Facebook was was born, and, and I, I remember contacting some friend from uh, Wilmington, and this girl named Cheryl, she uh, uh, communicated with me through, through Facebook, and I saw that picture with me, and this page was gone. It's gone forever. Long gone. And, uh, I remember Cheryl said, hey, you know what, Robertino, I still have that picture with you, this is basic. <laughs> I said, well, send me, send me. Note to self, guys, make sure you always have a backup of your yes. pictures of your favorite girls. Yeah, yeah you know, you're going to be jealous for her. Oh my God. You know, my ex wife, she was jealous of me and Madonna. I never met Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> so, um,. We talked about the movies that you've been on set with. We talked about a couple of the celebrities you've worked with. There was a particular young lady that you worked with on the set of Cat's Eye that you oh. had an encounter with. Tell us a little bit about that. Drew Barrymore. Yeah, one day I was in the, com in the commissary. And then she'd come in running out. She was uh, lousy. When she was there, you're not just there. And uh, She ran the show. The, uh, <laughs> there was a, a newspaper guy there and saw her. And ask her if she can, if she can, she can post some pictures. And she called me, "Hey, Robert, you come out and sit down with me and draw a picture of me." And I, because I can draw too, so I can try to draw. You're and also I was an drawing, artist. Drawing, I and Drew Barry, I was drawing Drew Barrymore. And what we're talking about the movie E.T. about talking about Henry Thomas, the little boy in E.T. And uh, she uh, asked me. Well, no, no, that was not with recently. Yeah. I tried to contact her on Facebook. And I, I said, if you really drew Barry Moore, do you remember? Um, yes, because sometimes they have a PR team that works their Facebook. But this. Yeah, you this remember me 
uh, that we took a picture together, the commissary, he was like 10 years old. And she said, well, send me a picture. Uh, send me the picture. But uh, I thought it was, like you said, you know, yeah, someone like else. Yeah, PR person. But no, no, I, I posted a picture, and it was her. So, oh. Yes, I do remember you. And she FaceTimed you, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, I do remember you. Yes. You guys had a nice talk? That's yeah, we were sure, but it was nice. Because you know, I'm pretty shy. Oh. I'm surprised I'm, I yeah. can't even do this. Clearly, he's very, very shy. <laughs> <laughs> Mary on the most four times. <laughs> Yeah. So besides um, Drew Barrymore, have you had contact with any of the other celebrities since your, your time working with them on these uh, sets? Uh, Robert Davi from uh, Raw Deal, he was the, he was the villain on the movie uh, License to Kill James Bond. I, I, he came, he always came to me for, for me because I, I do very good tricks for him, you know. And uh, I was, we were kind of close back in 1986, and uh, we went out together to a bar. You know, I don't drink, but right. we went out to a bar. I might have a coke, and uh, we uh, after the movie Rodeo was finished, he went his way, and I went mine. I mean, 35 years later, a couple months ago, in a convention, comic convention in yeah. Pittsburgh, he was there, and I told my daughter. And my grandson. I'm gonna go and film him, see if he recommends remember me. It's been 35 years. Right. You know, I was a little thing, I was skinny. Right, and you've run into so many people. I think, you know, yeah, well, while you have be a movie star, you know. Right. You, you, then when I came face to face with Robert B, he looked at me and he said, hey, I remember you. Oh. You were a thing. Is that well, You know, because he I'm probably could have been watching my page on Facebook. Yeah. You know, maybe that's one of the reasons you remember me. Maybe, maybe it's a, the the definitely Facebook has made our world smaller, where we can now yeah. stay closer and in touch with people that we were friends with 35 years ago. It's a pretty amazing world now. Um, in addition to that, I hear you still sometimes talk to Holter Graham. Yeah, he plays uh, Deck 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 uh, Deck in a uh, massive yeah, movie. Right? Yeah, He's, He plays the little boy that. Yes. Runs the bike. When you see the beginning of the movie that he's running in a bicycle and he is in a house and he's run and get his bike. That house, yeah, uh, belonged to my landlord. To your time, landlord. My landlord. What a weird small world. Mrs. Carter. <laughs> I guess she got like fifty dollars to use the front of the house. To use the front of the house, they lowballed her. Absolutely, it was a low budget film. Yeah, and speaking of being a low-budget film also, I hear that, uh, how much did Stephen King make while he, he was Well, that's what he said. I'm, I'm going by hearsay. Okay. He said $1,500 a week. $1,500 a week was what they gave him. Stephen King, $1,500 well, a week. that came in 1985. That was a lot of money. And, you know. But for Stephen King. Um, <laughs> you so, know what I mean. Um... Are you retired now? Or are you still I'm, working? Yeah, I'm retired, yes. Yeah, other than writing. You're still yeah, writing. I, I, I still write. I'm retired. I, and I, you write screenplays and this, do you write books as well or just screenplays? I, I write just screenplays. And I'm a big a Three Stooges collector. A big Three Stooges collector. That's right. I hear yeah. you like have your own little mini museum. I mean, I got a, <laughs> a, my apartment is a museum. A, the Three Stooges a relative had approached me. And to come to try to to see my my my, That's amazing. my uh, collection. That's amazing. Especially Curly's granddaughter. So you can relate to um, the the love of this type of collection. Absolutely. And I saw your face when we walked in here, and you saw this thing for the first time mm -hmm. after 35 years. You looked like you were gonna cry. And you looked like it just took you right back. Yeah, to because it's um. It was a it was a magic moment working for uh, Steve uh, for Dino. I just took a little vacation to come to uh, Ohio, and it happened that I met my daughter's mother, and that was the only reason I had to stay here yeah. in Ohio. I hear that uh, you had a, a very high respect for Dino De Laurentiis. Oh yes I did. You uh, you have actually met him more than once and, and you had an encounter with him that we talked about before. Um, yes. he had a notor he was he's, he was notoriously difficult. Um, but your experience was different. 
Tell me a little bit. Well, what happened is everybody said, well, Dean is in bad mood, don't go over there. Uh, don't talk to him about your script. I said, I'm not going to do that because I, I don't think I'm ready for this. I'm not ready. I mean, I just fresh out of the Navy, you know. Yeah. I don't know much, you know. I'm not going to. I, Martha, maybe I gave her some more. Even Stephen King, I gave him some of my script before. But I didn't know you know more. I met him a couple of times, but every time I talked to him, it was work related. It was it was not a, about friendship or right. what we did yesterday. It was just a work related uh, conversation that I had with him. And then there was one day you came into work. Uh, one and... day I came into work, and uh, I was supposed to do a catering service, a craft service for the movie No Mercy. Okay. Richard Gere and Kim Basinger, also in 1986. Um, that was I was a supposed busy to come year. in. I was supposed to come in. Oh, he was. <laughs> I was supposed to come in and do craft service for the movie No Mercy, 20 miles away. Okay. It was in a big building. You know, in in, um, in, be in between uh, the North Carolina border, South Carolina border, mm -hmm. and uh, I, was supposed to, I was supposed to go over there and do the, the craft service. And when I came to the kitchen, it, uh, everything was dirty. Everything was dirty, and I, I said, wait a minute, I, I need put some paint, I need to make some sauce, I need, this is dirty. Oh no, you were so going to have to clean before you could I, even get started. I, I don't know how to go on with that too, because I saw um, Martha car right. in, the, in the parking, so I thought she's still there. So I, I went to the office to try to tell Martha right. about the kitchen. You had a really good relationship with her. Yeah, but when I go and knock on the, on the office door, guess who opened the door? Guess it was Dino. And <laughs> was were you scared? <laughs> well, you know, I said, "Well, is Martha here?" And he got it with a big strong accent. Yeah. No, she's not here. What do you want? <laughs> nothing, yeah. nothing. Uh, ain't you the guy that works in the kitchen? Yeah, I am. Robert Dino? No, yes, I am. Well, well, come here. Why? Why you need Martha? What happened? You you look like you mad. Well, it's because I have to go to do. Uh, Glass service for no mercy, and the kitchen is dirty, and I, I, I came, uh, I'm just upset. Come on, show me. We walk across the parking lot into the into the kitchen, and then when he goes there, he look at, uh, he get upset with me. Not not with me, he get upset. No, but just upset. Got upset oh, at the situation. Like, yes. So yes. he said to me, just get get the stuff ready to go to, to your movie, and I stay here and clean. He put an apron on. Dino De Laurentiis, put on an apron. An apron, I, I tied the back. <laughs> and I told him, you know, uh, sir, you, you go ahead and back to the office. I, I couldn't even want to come back. Uh, you'll be back here at 3 o'clock in the morning. You're going to be tired. Uh, I, I can help you. Say, so you can just go back to the kitchen, uh, to the office, and I do this when I come back. So, you know, I loaded the truck the best I could. And I left, and he was still in the kitchen when I left. So when I came back, I was expecting the kitchen to be clean. But no, it's still the same. <laughs> he put on the apron. He, he, he tried. I, the, apron, <laughs> the apron was on the floor. That's probably more than he's ever done for anybody. And it was simply well, because, he, there was again, about There was about two or three pans clean on, on, on the Oh, see, he cleaned two top. or three pans. Yeah, he cleaned well, some. But I came in, I, 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 cleaned the, <laughs> I cleaned the kitchen the best I could that I went home. But that was the... the the so, so he wasn't really that difficult of a man. He was just no, a busy man, no, no, had a lot to do. No, and no. Uh, but, but he was really nice to you, and that that's. I think from there, the law rent is, uh, if you're not there at seven o'clock in the morning, then don't come back at all. Oh, don't. he meant business. Maybe, and five days a week, ten hours a day. Wow. And sometimes Saturdays and Sundays. Say, you're not here at 7 o'clock. He was a hard morning. worker, and so were you. So, yeah, and he well, respected that about I, you. I, I, was, I feared losing my job. Well, of course. So, because you yeah. worked so hard to get this. It was your dream. And, yeah, it was. And you got your foot in I, the door there. I uh, expected to stay there forever. But then you, you fell in love. Then I fell in love with my daughter's mom. I can meet her. Oh, and the then when I, of love. I got divorced and I had to stay. Don't fall in love, people. <laughs> I, have to, I have to stay here because I have to take care of my daughter. But if you hadn't fallen in love, we wouldn't be here right now having this conversation and we wouldn't have the beautiful Miss Lucy Fires. Miss Lucy so. Fires. <laughs> I'm glad you fell in love. It was a second dream of yours, I'm sure. Um, so now that you're retired, 
Um, what's your next move? What are you thinking of doing? Well, right now, um, trying to contact movie studios in Hollywood to see who will be interested in my my recent uh, writing bandanas. Yeah. You because you know that going into modeling or acting or anything. Yeah, I mean, no, no you just did a really great Dino De Laurento. Uh, impersonation, impersonation no. I would say. So I think maybe you should go into voice acting. I think uh, uh, <laughs> bandanas is not. You know, I wrote this story. It took me about um, two months of writing this story. It's not my type of writing. So you went out of your comfort zone. It, it, it's not my type of writing. It's just that it came to my mind. I dream you about. Um, then at the end of the story, I said, "How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this?" So I dreamed the end of the story. I said, you this is going to be the best end for the story. And uh, I talked to uh, Curly ha uh, Howard's great granddaughter, Andrea. Yeah. Um, I talked to her about the, the, the story I dedicated to her. And um, I gave her the, first, the very first uh, edition of Bandana. And then she said to me, uh, when you gave me that book, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't put it down. I had to, I had to sit on, on the edge of my seat reading this. That's amazing. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, Les, Les Robert, he's an American scriptwriter. He's my neighbor. Uh -huh. Say, he's 89 years old. He used to write for the I Love Lucy show. Okay. He lives, he's my neighbor. <laughs> but bad, bad uh, divorce, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, he told me that Bandana had was good, it's a good script. Has a lot of potential. So I, I don't know what made me get out of my routine as a writer, because I write more, most likely, uh, non-fiction for children like uh, Marionette by uh, 2008. Well, you never know what movie magic is going to happen. You've lived a life that has shown you so much movie magic, and here we are filming this for our audience. And who knows who's out there? Maybe somebody who's going to take an interest in bandanas. That would be great. So, by any chance, last question: Did you witness any of the actual filming of Maximum Overdrive? Oh yes, um, almost the whole thing. Almost the whole thing. Did you watch this get blown up? Yes. Wow, that must have been a really exciting. Actually, day. there were three of them, and they blew up all three of them. They blew all three of them. Up? Yes. Wow, that's amazing. Did it like? Yeah, go they, everywhere. They, yeah, they go everywhere. <laughs> That's yeah. really cool. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure interviewing you. You've had Thank an you. amazing Thank life, you. just driven by charisma and just the drive to just just get in the movies. I'm telling you, people. Thank you. You can do it too. You just gotta keep want up. it. You Follow your dreams. Follow, Follow your, your dreams. dreams. All right, guys. Thank Bye. you.
that's rude. This machine just called me an asshole. Mark Miller? Mark, where, where are we at today? You're at Whip's Magic Shop. It's the oldest magic shop in the state of Ohio. It's been right here, right in the middle of the strip in Geneva on the Lake since 1977. That's amazing. Have you been doing magic all that time? Been for about 25 years. That's amazing. I'm a professional magician. I perform all over the world, so it's anything with cards, coins, dice, fire, mind reading. So we perform here for the folks here in Geneva on the Lake, and we teach you how to do a little magic right on the spot. That is amazing. Now, we just ran through some of some of the bubbles out there. And then when we walked in, I saw you snatch one out of the air. Well, I'll show you how it works, watch. So you come out, you can show your hands completely empty. When was the last time you blew bubbles? Well, I didn't blow bubbles. So I mean, I don't know if his name was Bubble. <laughs> watch. All you have to do is blow a couple bubbles in the air. And all you have to do is find the right one. And when you do, you Sir? can catch it. And once it's solid, it's solid. I got a bubble, Lucy, and you don't. Mm. This is a very special bubble. Thing. It certainly is. <laughs> so happy you guys came in to see us, man. You guys look amazing. Thank you very it. much. It's a pleasure meeting you. Would you like to show us a couple more tricks? I'll show you something really cool. This is one of my favorite products. It's my everyday wallet when I open it up. It lights oh, on fire. Why that is? Money is the root of all evil. Well, you know that's right. So, you know what this is called? But I like money. Anti-wife device. Oh. <laughs> no, I would just reach in there. That ain't gonna stop me. I uh, know that's not stopping me. Lucy, she eats fire, so that ain't gonna stop her none either. You make me a little nervous over there. <laughs> you make me a little nervous. Come on in here, Lucy. So, oh, I gotta get my picture. <laughs> hey, you guys are cool. It was a man. pleasure meeting you, Mark. It's nice to meet you as well. Hmm. Oh, that's a big one. You know, my sister Zul said I've always been bad at blowing bubbles. Maybe sometime we should ask him. Anyways, that was my sister Zul's interview with the magic man in Geneva on the lake. When we were there, we had so much fun. I even tried out for one of my favorite bands, Skeptic Lens. You should definitely check them out. I wanted to be the lead singer, but they said something along the lines of killer vocals or something of that sort. But do you want to hear anyways? I should definitely sing something for you. <clears throat> she was a sex machine. She kept a motor clean. She was the finest damn woman that I ever seen. Killer, right? And speaking of 
love killer. Let's check out some of my favorite kill scenes from Maximum Overdrive. <sighs> Knife go rabbit on you, sweet thing. Well, it turned itself on and it bit me. Short circuit, maybe. Oh, there it goes again. Oh. 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 It's going again. It's still going. Look at that sucker. Nail it. Are you left handed or right handed? Right. I love your nails. Uh, thank you. Hold your right hand that way in front of you. I'm going to place both coins in your hand. Close your hand tight. Now my hands are empty, correct? Mm -hmm. Put both your hands behind your back. Put one coin in each hand. Do you think you can give me back the copy? Oh, that's a pretty good guess, but that looks like a quarter to me. What do you got in the other hand? Oh, wait a minute. What'd you do with my copper coin? <laughs> take, a look, a good one. take a look up here. Oh, you have that in your hand. <laughs> so among other things, he owns one of my favorite is this here. Can you tell me what this is? Well, the sleeve was used in making the trailer to part five, where they reach in and they tear up the baby carriage with it. And I met Robert England, but she signed it on this side. They couldn't autograph it because you can't just write on this wool. So he had to go over it several times. And then I met Heather Langenkamp and... Uh, um, Nancy Thompson? Yes. And they signed this side of the sleeve for me. This is so awesome. I don't want to take it off. I know. <laughs> so if you guys want to see, don't forget to come to his museum as soon as he opens it. It's, it's amazing. All the stuff he has here. We haven't shown everything in this episode because it's a secret. you got to come to the museum. If you want to see it thank you so much for doing this and allowing us to come and check it out absolutely and of course Look my forward. dad dad come here yes come on in <laughs> thank you dad for yep. helping duel my sister from another mister yeah thank you for it <laughs> not this mister <laughs> give me the good old friend here or aren't you gonna dance sexy Why aren't you dancing? Give me some music.
Kincaid.